Welcome to part one of a two-part video series where I show you guys how to build this functional and attractive looking 3D printing cabinet. This cabinet uses a lot of parts from Ikea and it features interior lighting as well as a pull-out shelf for easy access to your 3D printer. You can see the dry box at the bottom and that build is covered in part two of this video series and if you're interested in that you can find links in the description down below and I'll post some links at the end of this video. But first let's get started with the design of this cabinet. So right now we're looking at a 3D rendering of the cabinet we're going to be building and you can see in the front that I got two wood grain doors. On the top there's a wood grain panel and as I rotate the model around the rest of this cabinet is made from 5 8 inch thick white melamine wood and if we look on the bottom you can see the four caster wheels that will allow this cabinet to be mobile and easily move around our house or office wherever we decide to put this thing. And so I, as I rotate back to the front we'll be able to see another view here without the doors and the side panels so you'll see the big black box in the center is a representation of my 3d printer and i have a very large 3d printer so this cabinet for me is going to be about 40 inches high and 30 inches wide and for you guys you can of course resize the cabinet as you see fit for your own application but on the side here you'll see the drawer slides allowing our cabinet to have a uh, shelf here that slides out providing better access to our 3d printer and on the bottom there are a bunch of bunch of multicolored spools these are just spools of filament and uh, of course my in my case i'll be putting my dry box down there in the bottom which like i said in part two of this video series i'll show you guys how to build that dry box but for this 3d model it's just a representation of all the storage space that we have on the bottom so now that we have our basic layout designed here, let's go ahead and start building it. So after determining the dimensions needed to fit your 3D printer inside your cabinet, the first thing you need to do is cut up your pieces of melamine wood. Now, if you don't have a table saw, don't worry. Your local Home Depot, Lowe's, or Rona would be happy to help you cut these sheets. They normally come in standard four foot by eight foot sheets and therefore I would recommend planning ahead of time the best and most efficient way of fitting your panels onto a four foot by eight foot sheet so you get the best price per panel. And so the first panel you're looking at here is one of the side panels and you can see here that I've already mounted uh, my roller slide here right in the middle of the panel and so my roller slide falls 17 and a half inches on center from the bottom of my side panel. Now your dimension may vary, again, depending on the size of the panels you need to fit your printer. On the bottom, you can see that I've marked out a line one and nine sixteenths inches away from the bottom of my panel. And on the right side and the top, I've also marked a line that is five sixteenths away from the right edge and the top edge of the panel. Now five sixteenths of an inch is exactly half of five eighths of an inch which is half of the thickness of your panels. And so I've marked those lines out and on these lines, every five inches, I've drilled, pre-drilled a hole. And those are gonna be pre-drills for the fasteners we're gonna to use to fasten our cabinet together, which are gonna be number eight by two inch long wood screws. One other thing worth mentioning is that I've also stacked the two side panels, so my left side and my right side panel, on top of one another and so when I've pre-drilled these holes I've actually done two panels at once. When using melamine wood be sure not to press too hard with your drill as you'll very easily chip the nice surface finish off so let the drill do the work when you're drilling. And so optionally what you can do here is line the inside faces of your cabinet with a product called Thermopan. Now I got this at my local Home Depot and it's normally intended to be used with duct work but you can see here that it has a nice foiled surface and that foiled surface will act to reflect the radiant heat coming off of my 3D printer heated bed. And what this will do is raise the ambient temperature inside of the enclosure. And this is great for printing parts in ABS plastic, which normally tend to warp when the ambient temperature is too cold. So essentially what I'm doing here is also creating a heated enclosure. Now in a previous video, and you can find the link popping up on the right top corner of the screen right now, I used this thermopan material to create a cheap and easy to assemble heated enclosure attaching to the frame of my 3D printer. But of course in this project, we are shooting for a much more finished and professional looking cabinet. And so now that we're done here with the left hand panel of our cabinet, we can of course remove the right panel from under the left one, flip it over 
so that of course we're doing everything on the correct side of the panel and attach our drawer slide and our thermal pan to the right hand side, essentially mirroring the same part that we just finished here for the left hand side. And so before we move on to any of the other panels, this is a good opportunity for us to attach our hinge mounts for our Utresta hinges from Ikea. So I'm using the 125 degree version of these hinges and the first screw for this mount falls about three quarters of an inch away from the front edge of our cabinet and the second screw is about one and three eighths inch away from the first screw. Now a three eighths inch drill bit seems to work just perfect for the little, they almost look like drywall plugs that are uh, pre-assembled into these mounts. And one thing you can do is just attach a little piece of tape here on the end of your drill bit to make sure that you aren't gonna punch all the way through your melamine wood. You only wanna go so far, just enough that the plugs go in. And once the screws are tightened down and the plugs expand, everything is solid. So that gets you set up with the first one. Now my doors are 40 inches long. So my next mount is 35 inches away down in this direction here. And that's measured centered on center. If you're using a different size door, you're gonna have to take that measurement and obviously modify it to fit your door. After completing the left and right panels of our cabinet, we're moving on to the back panel of our cabinet. And at the top, we are gonna be drilling a series of holes here that are 5 16 inches away from the top edge. And on the bottom, we are going to be moving again 1 and 9 16 inches away from the bottom edge and drilling a series of holes. I've left the drill dust on the panel there, so it's just easier to see where I've put my holes. And they're spaced about five inches apart on my panel. Depending on the size of yours, of course, you may end up spacing yours apart a little bit differently. And after drilling the holes in the back panel, it also received the same treatment as the side panels with a layer of the thermal pan up at the top where the 3D printer will be sitting. Next up is the top panel of our cabinet, and you can see that I've already installed a thermal pan on the underside of this panel as well as a LED bird light kit from Ikea. Now this light kit comes with three light strips that normally connect end to end. However, I want to run them in this orientation to provide a nice even light inside the cabinet. And therefore I had to do a little bit of soldering up at the top there. You can see two loops of wire connecting these lights in parallel. At the bottom, so this is actually gonna be the front of our cabinet when we're done. I've used the wire management clip that comes inside this kit to guide the wires out to the front where the switch will be stuck to the bottom of our top panel. And this way I can just easily reach inside the cabinet and switch the lights on and off when we're done. And so we're finally ready to start putting some of these panels together and we have the left panel and the back panel in front of us right now sitting in some corner clamps holding them in place. The clamps haven't been tightened down yet and the panels actually aren't quite touching each other yet. There's still a bit of a gap. I'm using that gap because I'm gonna be putting some Gorilla Glue into the gap the same way we would use wood glue. Now wood glue doesn't really stick to a melamine surface as well as it should and so I'm opted to use some Gorilla Glue instead and I'm hoping it's going to be uh, a really good adhesive for this surface. And so once I get that Gorilla Glue in there I'm going to butt those two pieces up against one another, tighten the clamps down and I'll show you from the back side we're going to put those screws in so they're going to be number eight by two inch long screws. They're going to be put through our clearance holes on the left panel. So after attaching the right panel to the back panel in the same manner that we attached the left panel to the back panel, it's now time to attach the top panel to all three of those. And you can see that I have the clamps oriented in this fashion to hold the front edge of the top panel in place. And what I did off camera was start to screw in some of the screws through the sides, so the left side and the right side and the back side into the back side of the top panel uh, because of course the clamps are only holding it along the front edge and nothing would be holding it along the back edge so it would want to fall. So I started a few screws into the back edge holding it in place and then I was able to work my way around the rest of the top panel getting all the screws in all the way around as well as adding some of that Gorilla Glue to hold everything in place firmly. The bottom panel is finally ready to mount and I've offset it one and a quarter inches from the bottom edges of the back and side panels. And the reason that I've done this is later on when we go to mount the caster wheels, you'll see that they will be partially hidden by the front doors, the side panels, and the back panel. And so this is so that the, obviously the cabinet can still roll, but those ugly caster wheels won't really be seen. 
And of course you can use your corner clamps to get things lined up and then use your screws again uh, through the sides and the back panel to mount this bottom panel. With the bottom panel in place, we are ready to mount the caster wheels from Ikea. So these are real caster wheels. And the one thing you just need to pay attention to is that when you mount your caster wheels, make sure that when you rotate them, they won't contact the door up front or the panels on the side or down below the panels on the back. So they should be able to rotate 360 degrees without any sort of interference. So with the cabinet now standing on the caster wheels in the background, it's time to start making our sliding shelf. And we're starting with the pieces that will mount to our drawer slides. And so they're 28 inches long, which is a few inches shorter than the inner depth of the cabinet. And that way I can run wires behind the 3D printer down to the power supply in the bottom section of the cabinet. And so what I've done here is I've taken the uh, inner parts of the drawer slides off of the assembly. And to do that, most drawer slides have a little plastic tab or a button, something to release these and pull them out of the other section of the drawer slide that we've mounted to the inner walls of our cabinet. And once they're out, I have basically just put them one inch uh, from the upper edge of these pieces of wood. So the center line here is one inch away from the edge. And that's just going to put the top of the shelf at the proper distance away from the rest of the assembly so nothing touches or interferes. And I've offset uh, from the front edge uh, of the drawer slide to the front edge of this support here, about two and a half inches. And that's gonna keep the front of the shelf about three quarters of an inch away from the doors. And that way, with this thing fully closed, there's not gonna be any sort of chance of interference between this assembly here and the doors. With the drawer slides attached to those 28 inch long pieces of wood, we can insert them back into the cabinet like you see here. And we can measure the distance between the centers of those pieces of wood. And of course then transfer them to our actual shelf piece down here. And you can see that I've again left the drill dust present so you can see where I've drilled the holes, but those holes will fall on center with the pieces of wood that we've inserted back into the cabinet. And so after pre-drilling our holes, we can mount our shelf to those side pieces of wood attached to the drawer slides and then test it out and make sure it slides freely and into place. At this point, you're ready to attach the doors to the cabinet. And these doors are from Ikea. They are Askerson doors, and I believe they are actually intended for kitchen cabinets. They are designed to work with the Utresta hinges that we installed earlier. And so they snap into place onto the hinges and the hinges will snap onto the mounts that we mounted onto the side panels of our cabinet in the earlier steps. And these doors are 15 inches by 40 inches tall. And so each of the IKEA cabinet doors uh, come in a variety of sizes. And so depending on the cabinet size that you're building, you're gonna wanna check out the IKEA website to see which standard door sizes might fit your cabinet. And so on the inside of the doors, you can see that I've mounted more thermopan and of course, this is going to complete the thermal pan box inside, reflecting all the radiant heat from the 3D printer back inwards and hopefully keeping that nice and toasty for a heated enclosure. Up at the top of the doors, you'll see that I also installed some handles. These are blanket handles from Ikea and they just screw onto the back side of the door. And so now you can open both doors and make sure that there's no interference when you are rolling out your drawer slide. So the main structure of the cabinet now complete, we're ready to take care of some of the finer details. And so I've flipped the cabinet onto its back and I've taken the doors back off because we're gonna first address the rough cut edges of the uh, melamine wood. And so right here, you can see that I have some veneer edging that I've laid onto the front. And in the background, you can see the regular clothes iron that we're gonna be using to press this on. So it's actually pre-glued and you can see uh, the label there. So it says pre-glued veneer edging. And so it uses the iron to activate the adhesive. And it's basically just gonna stick it right to the wood and we're gonna trim off the excess with an X-Acto knife. Now with all the cut edges of the cabinet cleaned up, you can take your LEDs and snap them back into place. Up in the top right hand corner, I've attached the switch with some double sided tape and all of the wiring has been mounted to the inside wall of the cabinet using the IKEA cable management system. And it runs along the back wall down into the bottom section of the cabinet 
where it goes to an IKEA power bar. The power bar cord exits the back of the cabinet with a hole that I just opened up with a regular hole saw. So up until this point, the top side of the cabinet has been a little bit neglected. And to be honest with you, it's a little bit of an eyesore with all of these joints coming together and these uncut faces of MDF. Now I didn't put any veneer on these uh, faces here just because I knew that I was gonna do something a little bit different. And so I found these cover panels at Ikea and they actually match the doors and they are Askerson uh, cover panels. And so I believe they're part of the kitchen lineup at Ikea. And like I said, they match the doors. So it gives this cabinet a nice looking finish. And two of them side by side should cover the top of the cabinet nicely. And I'm just gonna screw them in from the bottom. It'll give a nice tabletop sort of look uh, to the top of the cabinet. With the top panels now in place, this thing is starting to look pretty sharp. But before we put the printer in its place, there's just one more little thing that I want to do. Since this is a 3D printing cabinet, it's pretty important that you can monitor temperature and humidity inside of the cabinet. And so I got these little temperature and humidity sensors off of eBay for just a few dollars each. They're round, they have a nice digital display on them, and it requires a one and three quarter inch diameter hole to be popped into the panel on the side. So I'm gonna grab my hole saw, I'm gonna pop a hole in the side here, and this thing should just snap right into place. So that pretty much covers the build of this cabinet. If you guys happen to have any questions, please don't be shy, leave them down in the comments section down below. I always do my best to get back to all of your questions and comments, and I would be happy to help you guys out. Hope this inspires you guys to build your own 3D printing cabinet. Thanks for watching part one of this video series, guys. Part two features the dry box build, and you can see the dry box sitting down on the bottom shelf of this cabinet. This dry box is gonna keep your filament from taking on moisture so that it performs optimally every time you go to print. I definitely encourage you guys to check out that video as well.